Hey guys, it's Aiden Artsy here. We're going to be building a trap track from start to finish. So stick around for the full video if you're wanting to make this genre. You can grab the samples for this one actually in the description. Just download them there. Just a quick disclaimer, this is going to be as in-depth as possible. Obviously, I'll have to skip over a few things because otherwise I'd be here for hours. But I really hope you get the details out of this one. Let's jump in. So this one's going to be a bit more of an aggressive trap song, unlike the kind of more traditional trap style. We're going to be going a bit faster and using a bit more, um, you know, large, big kind of bass sounds for this one. So let's set it to 160 BPM up in the corner there. Now, I've got my drum rack loaded up here for the drums. So let's just load in a 8-bar MIDI clip. I'm just going to press Shift-Command-M here in Ableton. And I'm going to drag in a few samples from the pack, which you can grab. I'm going to grab the kick drum here. I'm also going to grab the that's kit, Trap Kick 12, by the way. I'm going to grab this snare. The reason I'm choosing this kick, it's got quite a nice punch, but it's also got this nice saturated feel to it, which is great for trap. This snare, very nice and tight. And I'm also going to grab this nice kind of machine gun hat. Very good. Awesome. Now that we've got those three basic sounds, let's just go into our MIDI clip here and we'll just start to draw in a basic trap pattern. Now, you got to have the hats kind of going on every sort of eighth. So that's every quarter. If we double that up here, let's just copy that over there. And that's going to be basically the basis of our hat pattern. Let's copy that over for the whole time for now. So we have something to just work with that flows. We're going to draw in a kick here, snare on the two. Sorry, the 1.3. Now with the snare, what we'll need to do real quick is just uh, go and tighten it up here so we're not having that gap because the original is a loop. We're going to go on the offbeat on that one. Let's copy these over. We're going to maybe put an extra little kick in there. Let's duplicate that pattern. And that's kind of a basic trap pattern there we can kind of do some cool things with the hats perhaps add like a little 16th note trill there and at this last one i'm going to take out the last three there just so we have a bit of a gap great let's start to add in some extra snares and stuff now i'm going to use this trap snare one here to kind of add some extra uh kind of funkiness i guess to the to the pattern some offbeat groove Let's drag it onto F1 here. And we'll do it on the offbeat here. So between three, four and four. And what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna shorten it with the fade out even more. And I'm gonna transpose it up five or so. May need to compensate with the volume a bit there. And I'll copy that over to the next four bars and we'll add an extra one before for the other one, so it's kind of like an extra offbeat snare. Now we're getting a decent pattern. One thing I will do is taking the original snare sample, I'm gonna create a new um, audio track. I'm gonna color it the same as here, and I'm gonna call this one Rev Snare. And what we're gonna do is reverse this sample, and we're just gonna take this part here, and I think it's every third or fourth snare maybe we'll do, a reverse into it like so. That just creates an extra little bit of tension there. We can bring the sample down there in volume two and let's copy that over to the next one. So it's every four bars. We're gonna chuck in a few loops from the pack as well just to spice up this loop. We're gonna bring in the Shakers 150, set it to re-pitch so that it kind of matches the new BPM of 160. Now we kind of sometimes, unfortunately, it gets it wrong. So you have to warp it at 150 BPM because you know that is the tempo of this sample. Set the loop on. Let's copy that across. Set the color the same. Bring it down volume. Bring in this other loop here. This is a bit more of a um, experimental technique that I did for this tune. It's actually in a 100 BPM loop. Got kind of a nice like background groove there. But what we're going to do is we're going to warp it in a really weird way. So we're just going to chuck on the texture warping mode. We're just going to bring the grain size right down here. Let's solo it so we can hear it in isolation. 
I'm going to bring the flux up so we get a lot of randomness in the sound. And we're also going to pitch it up just to give it a bit more of a weird vibe. Yeah, that's sick. All right, let's copy that across and then we'll bring it down in volume and match to the rest of the track. Awesome. Chucking in loops like that can just really help fill out the drums and make them more groovy rather than just a bit stale and static, especially in the sections like the intro and stuff like that where you don't really have a lot of stuff going on. We're just going to chuck in one more sample. This hat shaker loop here. I'm going to copy that across, put it on re-pitch again just so it ma matches the 160 BPM without sounding too weird. This one I'm just going to chuck on EQ to high pass it because there's a bit of weird low end in it. About 800 hertz, bring it down. Quite a lot this one, but that is sounding good there. Let's just assign the color to those ones. I'm just gonna duplicate this twice. This will also set the basis for the 808 pattern that we're about to create. Without further ado, let's get onto the 808. What I'm gonna do is add a new MIDI clip. Let's color this like a nice kind of green color and we'll call it 808. Let's bring in from our sample pack which we have, I'm going to bring in this 80816 and bring it into a simpler. I want to make sure that the C, the root note is actually what it is meant to be. So when I play it on a keyboard, it actually is what it says, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in a utility tuner and this is going to show us the pitch of our 808. Now it's a bit too high, so I'm going to transpose it down four semitones or three rather and up a bit. So that is right on that main pitch there. It does have a bit of pitch variation in the 808, so that's fine as long as you get it around kind of this mark. Cool. Let's kind of start to uh, work. Now, in this particular case, I'm going to be in the key of F sharp minor. So that's going to be a good bass key just because it really cuts through on big systems. We're going to create a four bar pattern for now, or eight bar pattern, should I say? And we're going to start on the F sharp. Yeah. That's kind of the vibe we want there. We can bring up the volume a bit if we need. And that kind of aligns with that first kick there, right? And what I'm going to do is kind of go down the scale a little bit. Bring it back here a bit. That's kind of a nice pattern. This kick here aligns with this 808. Got an extra little note in there, which is fine. It's kind of nice to add those extra little 808 uh, bumps in there. For now, I'm just going to copy this across four times. What I'm going to do is make this kind of F sharp note here descend a bit to kind of create a bit of a melody almost. So we're going to go. There you go. Now we'll go that one down there. One thing I'm just going to do real quick before I forget is just make sure the voices are on mono here. What I'm going to do as well is just copy this over here. I'm going to use this melodic pattern a bit later, but for now, I kind of want to have this more kind of consistent note pattern. And this is what I'll be using in the drop. This will be probably more for the end of the drop slash the intro where it's going to have a bit more melodic kind of pad stuff going on. we're going to do is just bring that 808 down a little bit in volume now. Um, we're also now going to side chant to the kick. We want the 808 to kind of cut through, but we don't want the kick to be dwarfed as a result. So we're just going to chuck on a compressor here, uh, side chain from the kick, uh, which will be in drums, trap kick post mixer, just like a little bit of attack to avoid any clicking. Make sure to EQ the kick input so we get a nice punchy side chain. Normally between 4 and 6 dB of, of gain reduction. Sounding good to me there. I'm also going to add a nice drums bus on here, I think. It, a drums bus is kind of a drums bus plugin or device, but it's nice to add a bit of grit to 808s and other bass sounds. So I'm just going to chuck it on here. Yeah. make sure the damp is up. It might add a bit of volume as a result, so you can bring this trim down. Also blend the dry wet you need. If you have any favorite 808 tips for your tunes, 
chuck them in the description. All right, I'm gonna copy this across, but now for what we're gonna do is we're gonna start doing the melodies. So I'm gonna create two new MIDI clips here. This one's gonna be the pad. And now what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use a nice plugin called Labs by Spitfire. They have some great synth pads and kind of other really awesome sounds. And if you go to synth, I think I used, bring out the volume a bit here. This impure patch is really nice. We're gonna give it a little less attack so we can have a bit more of an immediate playing effect. Bit less release as well, so it's not super paddy. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy the MIDI from the 808 onto the pad. And let's see if we can layer it down an octave. Not that little release, add a bit more reverb to the sound too. Maybe we'll go up the octave for both of these. And I wanna add a bit of thickness to this. So what I'm gonna do is just use a bit of chorus, I think, uh, because it's just lacking some width in the stereo image. Just gives it a bit more of a wavy feel. Gonna also send this to my main verb bus. Doesn't really matter too much if you have reverb, what type of reverb it is, just a bit more spaciness. Gonna copy this down to the new MIDI track we created. We're also then gonna load up another instance of Labs. And this time we're gonna use the piano, rare groove piano. We're gonna use the sustain version. We're gonna copy the MIDI on. Add some reverb to this version too. See how this sounds up the octave. Bring that pad down. Let's call this one keys. I think this one also needs a bit of thickness with some chorus. Let's put some ensemble on it. Just to add a different type of thickness than the pad. These little differences can add nice add ups in the mix later on down the track. So it's good to think of how I can add subtle differences now. What I may also do is just high, low pass that pad just so it's really deep sounding. What I'm gonna do now is use this MIDI from the 808. I'm gonna create a new MIDI track and this is gonna be the lead for the drop. It's gonna be a serum preset. So we're just gonna really quickly load it in now. It's actually in the pack that you'll be getting as well included in the serum presets folder. Load it up and it's this BS Odea patch. Copy this 808 pattern on here. We'll go up the octave. Don't worry, we're not gonna leave it exactly like this. Give it a bit more volume out of Serum. And we're actually gonna leave out this first note. And we're gonna put it here instead. We're gonna leave a gap there. This is how we're gonna create a bit of interest in our drop. We're just preempting this. And we're gonna do the same here, leave out that gap. You can also do this. Bit of a different pattern there. And I think what we could do is octave this. Pretty sick there, maybe go down the octave. For now, we'll just kind of copy that across. This is a foundation. We're gonna add some more bass sounds and stuff like that in the drop a bit later. This is just kind of getting the vibe of the drop get down early. Okay, so before I add a few more sounds in the drop here and then add the effects, I just wanna make a few more changes. I think, for example, I think this second, well, actually both of these are a bit too long. So we think we can shorten these a bit. I'm just gonna bring up the gain here on the utility so it's a bit louder. And I think this second one here could be a slightly different pitch. I want to do some kind of cool effect on this one here. I don't know, make it a bit different. So I'm going to consolidate this one and we'll shorten this. Maybe. Yeah. 
and we'll make sure we copy that over there and we'll take out this last one to kind of leave a gap I think do that I think I want to do something similar maybe take out this last 808 here take out this these like loops and stuff just because you want that kind of last snare to be like that maybe even like this maybe even we'll take out the drums here completely as like a nice little I think we'll then bring in this melodic version this these keys need a bit more A bit more chorus on that as well. I think there also needs to be another drum element. Something a bit different to kind of layer up with the snare. So there's this nice snap kind of sample I'm going to drag in here. I'm just going to layer this up with every second snare. Like this. Just adds a bit of flam to every second snare. I think I like that. Speaking of the snare, let's bring it up just a little bit. Same with the trap kick. The kick and the snare are the two main elements, right? I'm, I want some sort of growl on the first note here. And what I'll do as a result, I'm just going to insert 16 bars here and I'm going to copy over a second version of our drums as well as everything else. Just because I know we're going to make a lot of changes to the drop one. In the first part of these, this drop here is I'm going to remove these hats to kind of allow some a gap there right take out all these elements too and now in this clip here we're going to drag on another serum it's the solid growl preset bs solid growl this one okay too high we gotta go down now we copy it over there do the same thing with the hats there In this one, we're going to copy over and pitch down in, in like relation to the key that, or well, the, the chord it's kind of implying, which will be a D1 in this case. And there's something I want to fill these gaps in with now. And this one, I'm actually going to use a stock serum preset. It's called BA Death Reese. And it sounds like this. I'm going to go down an octave. We're going up the fifth. Lengthen these notes out until they kind of feel right, okay? The release time slash the note length is very important in certain sounds, and this one is um, one of those. That feels right. Uh, let's copy that across. I'm going to put this one down. This one can go down too. I think this one I just feel like needs to it needs to go come out okay that's starting to take a bit more shape now I think there just needs to be one kind of extra little sound somewhere just to kind of add a little bit of an offbeat sort of bass sound so I'm gonna load in one more instance of serum I think this stabby height bass will be a good option I think just before around here Offbeat. Copy that over. I think this one can go down a bit because it's in a different part of the chord. Beat across. Okay, I just realized as well, I think this lead would sound better if we pitched it down. So I'm going to drag on the pitch MIDI device and just bring it down an octave so I don't have to go into each of the clips. However, I do think some of these would be better up the octave. So I'm going to try bringing up the slices. 
Same with this one up here and this one over here. Now we're gonna get onto the effects and we're gonna to start to flesh this out a bit more. I'm gonna add in two new channels. I'm gonna color these both white for now. This one I'm gonna call Chime Hit because we've got this kind of impact when the drop comes in. And I feel like this snare needs some kind of re-emphasizing or uh, layering in so it just kind of hits a bit harder. There's this nice Chime Noise Hit sample. Drag that in. Make sure it's not warped or anything, and we're just gonna bring it back. I'm gonna copy that over here as well. Great, now I just wanna add some kind of background vocal kind of effect. This FM vocal scream pitchy thing uh, from the Fabian Mazur hype vocals pack sounds like this. I'm just gonna paste it on a new audio channel. Make sure once again, it's not warped. And I'm gonna bring on the in on the third or maybe fourth beat of each bar, um, of, of the first bar of like say every eight or so bars. Let's just see how that sounds. Okay, it needs a bit too loud and needs to be pitched differently. So let's bring it down in volume and let's... Up two sounds good. That just adds like an extra little like hit in the background just to fill out the drop more. I may use that in the intro as well. So I'm just going to copy that over to this section here before uh, I forget to do it. What I'm going to do real quick is you can use any EQ here. I'm just going to take out some of the lows of this sound. And let's just play it, one of them. I'm also going to take out some of the highs because I want to push it into the background a bit. There we go. Great, that's sounding really good there. I'm just gonna call this Vocal BG. Oh. <laughs> what I may do is actually just take it out of the first part of the drop though, because I kind of wanted to leave it a bit more like impactful and taking out what's happening in the intro, we'll do that. We'll leave it in for the second half of the drop though to kind of bring it back in. Great, now that we've started to really formulate our track here, we can start to create energy in this build section and kind of lead into things. First and foremost, I'm gonna like remove this gap here because I think we can probably have it in there. The other thing is I'm gonna add, finally start to add in some locators here. So I'm gonna call this the intro. I'm gonna call this the build, just so I know what's going on. Drop, outro, and I'm also gonna mark this out here as the end of our track. So we're just gonna make a shorter arrangement for the sake of this uh, guide and this build. Now for the first part of the drop, I wanna bring out the hat shaker loop just so it's a bit more minimal. And then when it comes into this section, there's just a subtle bit more energy. But to reinforce that, I'm also gonna add another ride loop in. So let's bring in from the sample pack, the 150 ride loop. Once again, we're gonna bring it onto the repitch mode. And this is just gonna bring a bit more energy and tension into this section. I think it needs a bit of EQ just cause there's a bit of harshness in the top end. Also kind of start to work on this gap here. We're gonna add a drum fill in here or something soon because we wanna leave a bit of you know tension and release before the drop comes in. Make sure there's no uh, clicks by adding a few fades. I'm also gonna copy these drums, especially the intro drums. I'm gonna copy them over to the outro twice. We can kind of edit that in a second, but that's the basis of the outro too. I'm gonna copy the ride loop over to the outro section just to kind of add something different coming out of the drop. Now we can turn to the drums in this section. I'm gonna start to bring in like a kick every so often. So we're gonna copy this here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from bar five or bar 13 here. I'm gonna start to build the energy up. So I'm gonna put a kick there, put a kick there, put a kick here and then kind of speed it up. Might also bring out the kick, except this first hit in the first four bars just to create a sense of like tension. So it sounds like this. And then we'll go even faster on these kicks here. And then I think on this section, we can duplicate these trap snares. And then we can make them even faster, rapid fire.
that just builds up that tension really nicely there, right? One thing we can also do it to add even more tension is to use a high pass filter on the whole drums group. Group all of this in a Ableton group and we'll just turn it on just for this section here. Um, and we'll also bring up the automation like this. And then it will come back out for the drop there. Now to join this up, we can have two more riser effects just to increase that tension even more. So we can bring this long sweep up sample here. Once again, make sure it's unwarped. And there is another eight bar riser sample we can bring in once again, make sure it's unwarped. We want them to kind of both come out right before the, <laughs> the drop here. So let's bring them both down in volume and we can, and right there as well. We'll color these both white. Let me bring this down, get out of my way. Now we can copy over our pattern keys to the intro and build just to kind of add a bit of that ambient vibe we're going for in the intro. Yeah. With that vocal, it sounds really sick. What I might do in this first one though is remove the keys so we just have the ambient pad. Might even just reduce or remove, sorry, the uh, top notes here. I'm gonna increase that thickness. Bring up the volume. Oh, there's a kick I left in there that I should have deleted. What we'll also do is copy over this chime noise so it hits right at the beginning of the intro. Maybe down a bit of volume. I'm gonna bring up these drums in volume a little bit too. Bring these out here, maybe like here. That's sounding good, but we need to fill this gap. So let's add in a new track. We're gonna bring in this Tom Phil sample here. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to use this second half of the Tom Phil, so this part. We're gonna turn on the forward only beats warping mode. And we're gonna cut it off right at the drop here. So we're gonna have a bit of a gap at the start. We're also gonna use the same sample here. We're gonna bring it, we're gonna bring it back here a bit. like that kind of nice flammy beginning of the sample there. So we're using essentially two parts of this Tom fill sample to create two different kind of fills. This one's a bit more relaxed. This one's a bit more urgent. Now I kind of want to introduce some of these bass sounds in the build. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste this. And we're going to kind of bring it up with a utility so it's not full volume. Also go into the serum patch. This particular patch, which is once again, the BA death reads, the mod wheel has a nice mapping. What I'll do is I'll just uh, configure the mod wheel and we will tweak the mod wheel so that it kind of comes down. I think those uh, trap snares need to go a bit louder. So I also want to create a bit of tension in the drop here. I want to create two new channels to kind of Make some ambient noise in the drop to fill it out a bit more. Open hat. I'm gonna make it kind of follow the other gaps we've left here and the other shaker loops and stuff like that. So this one's gonna go every two like this. First, I'm gonna high pass this noise tape hit uh, just cause it's got too much low end. We're also going to group these together so I can kind of control the overall volume. Cool, it tops. This is just going to be filling out the drops kind of energy, if that makes sense. And we'll copy paste it over to pretty much every gap that we've got going on here. Um, same with the second half of the drop. Bring it down a volume a bit more. It's pretty quiet because we want it to kind of just occupy the background energy. Once we put this into a limiter, this noise will really make the drop kind of come alive, which is nice. Okay, let's quickly turn to the outro. I'm gonna take these keys and pads and paste them over here. I think during this section, I wanna bring the keys down an octave or something. Yeah. And then just bring out these last ones because we don't really want them for the outro. One thing we will also do is just copy this drum 
Tom Phil. I really like this little moment here we create. I think we need to delete these noises. Deleting those hats there as well. Little extra benefit of that extra tension. I also just want to copy this out here so we have like a nice hit out of the drop and copy these vocal stabs as well. Kind of want to bring this growl in during the build to the drop. Maybe a bit earlier. What I'll do though is kind of just add an EQ with a high pass and maybe even a low pass. And then we can turn that on just for this hit. So I quickly just made this nice resampled version of the pad here. What I've basically done is I've taken this pad, I bounce it to audio, I reversed it and took a nice little snippet of it here. And I pitched it down an octave, used the texture warping mode. I created a second version of it, laid it with only five semitones down, processed it with a bunch of effects, drums, bass, overdrive, EQ8, grain delay, chorus ensemble, and reverb. Don't worry about the exact process. I just did this to basically create some extra interest in the background of the track during this intro where there's not a lot going on. If you're interested in these more advanced sound design techniques, make sure you check out our breakthrough sound design course, which I'll leave a link for in the description. Basically, we just automate the filter down on this to kind of create some tension down into the build. Very subtle. We've also got them coming back in during the second half of the drop. Okay, now we come to the last step. We've created tension and energy. We've filled out the rest of the track. Now all we need to do is create a few magic moments and then give it the final polish. So the first thing I want to do to create some magic moments is in the drop, these leads are cool, but I feel like there's a bit of movement we could add to certain notes. For example, this one I feel like would be nice up the octave, but what if we use the pitch bend instead and we may have to go into Serum, make sure that it goes up the full octave. Copy that over to every second hit. In this gap there, I think I want to pitch up the 808 an octave just to kind of create an extra moment there. And these extra little bits just add a bit of interest throughout the drop rather than it just being a repeating loop. I think I want to do something similar on these kind of death Reese notes. I think I want to go in here and create like something that mimics the kind of rhythm. Do the same here, bring that note back here, do it on this one. Take out these extra little notes here, take out those. Take out that note. While I think of it as well, I'll also copy a version of the keys over to the 808 here. Take off the top one. I just want like a simple kind of version of the 808 just for the outro of the drop. Yeah. Simple but effective in this section. We just kind of bring in the energy down. And that's pretty much all the magic moments. We've got this Tom here, Tom here there. We might just bring out the keys a bit to emphasize this moment. Okay, we'll create a few more moments just in the outro of the drop. If we go to the grab this lead, I'm gonna copy over the kind of pitchy one. I'm just going to make like a low pass filter that I'll turn on just for the outro to make it a bit more dull. We just don't want it to be super bright during this section so we can kind of bring that up so then it's like here in the drop. And like there in the outro, that just kind of brings the outro 
slash like out of the drop a bit it makes it feel a bit more natural basically because the sounds aren't all of a sudden stopping and that's basically it now all we've got to do is the final polishes so we're just going to go through each of the channels and just balance it add any eq that kind of thing maybe use a few reverb sends just to get the mix sounding a bit tighter i've got a um stereo send that i use to add a bit of stereo to my drums it's basically just an ozone imager fab filter pro q3 to cut out the lows of the drums with on the sides and then a mid side utility just to only solo the side channel i'm going to bring this up quite a bit in the stereo just so we get a bit of that stereo width i solo the drums that's without it that's with it just adds a bit of thickness there i'm going to bring these tops a little bit down i'm going to make the kick a little louder too just because it's a bit Lacking, I'm finding. Make the drums overall a bit louder. Kind of balance the tom fill a bit. Bring the 808 down a little bit. May also create a quick other little magic moment here just by taking the bass out of that first bit and then having it go there. Just for that first one. I feel like the lead's a little loud. I feel like it could do with a little bit of EQ in the like upper mids. Around 1.4k there, just to boost it up, and that just gives it a bit more presence in the mid range. There we go. I'm also just going to add a bit of chorusing and saturation, I think, to this one, just to thicken it up even more. It's there, but it's not quite there for me. So and then we bring it down to compensate. Just gives it a bit more of a raw feeling for me. It sounds a lot less cheesy as well. Same with this death reese. I think it needs a bit more like overdrive or something just to give it a bit more grit. Balance the dry wet there. Just a bit more edginess. That stab can go up in volume a bit. I'm just gonna give these a few pan. I'm gonna put these left a bit and these right just so we get a bit of stereo separation. I'm also just going to cut out some of the lows in this lead while I think of it. And I think that's pretty good. Might just give the the master a bit more. Last polish with Pro L2 just to give it a bit of loudness. I think that growl needs to be a bit louder. And I'm really happy with that. So let's listen to the final result. That is our trap song done. And there you have it, a nice aggressive hybrid trap song, complete with bass, leads, pads, drums, and effects. I really hope you guys liked this build. If you wanna see other genre builds like this, leave a comment below. Apart from that, give it a like if you got something out of this video so other people will be able to see it. Also subscribe for more tutorials exactly like this. And make sure while you're at it, you grab the trap starter kit below, which has got all the samples from this lesson a free cheat sheet for trap production and a, some serum presets as well. So there's a lot you can grab for that one. So grab that in the description, but I will see you in the next one. Peace.